We are pleased to welcome the Linamar Corporation as the presenting sponsor of this conference. Based in Guelph, Linamar is a multi-billion dollar company operating 58 manufacturing facilities around the world. Linda Hasenfratz, our first speaker, is the CEO of Linamar, and she joined the company in 1990 and has worked in a variety of roles, including machine operator, general manager, and the president. She received her honors, Bachelor of Science, and Executive MBA from the University of Western Ontario, and she has been named one of Automotive News' 100 leading women in each year of its publication, and was inducted into the Canadian Hall of Business fame in 2016. Please join me in welcoming Linda Hasenfratz. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a real thrill for me to be here uh, this morning as well. Uh, in a, what appears to be a continuing theme, I am also a chemistry graduate. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, what's great is there's just so many fantastic areas of science to study. Uh, and so many exciting careers that can build out of it. And I think Dr. Niemer uh, really hit it on the head when she said, uh, when she talked about the skills that you learn as a scientist, as an engineer, uh, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, all of these uh, skills are just so important and so many businesses are looking for them today that there is more and more demand for engineers and scientists in all kinds of areas that you wouldn't think of, including banking and, uh, many different uh, institutions that are seeing the value of the skills that we all learned uh, in science. So uh, I'm here to al also uh, offer you uh, my welcome. We're thrilled to be the sponsors uh, of this uh, event. I think it's a great opportunity uh, for young women to s see and hear from uh, from people who have uh, built careers in all kinds of different areas uh, of science. Uh, so as you heard, uh, I'm CEO of Linamar. We're a global diversified manufacturing company, uh, and uh, we're very involved in trying to encourage young people into STEM, and particularly uh, young women. Uh, in fact, uh, I like to give a little bit of advice when asked, which isn't often, uh, by, uh, by young people around uh, you know, what, what to do in terms of their education and careers. And so I say, I think you should pick an area of study that interests you, obviously, and a lot of people will give you that advice. They'll say, study what you love, uh, which is good advice, but it's not enough. I think it's only the first step. So first you pick something that you think is uh, interesting, but then I would encourage you also to do a little bit of research on what are the different jobs that I could do studying that particular field. Uh, further, what is the demand for those jobs out there? I mean, are people, are, you know, are those jobs that are in demand or are, are we graduating too many people in, in that particular area and that you can't get a job in that area when you graduate? and also research the earnings potential of that job, and just make sure it lines up with the lifestyle that you envision, right? Like, to me, it's just three boxes to check uh, to help you sort of plan out where, where I'm headed. And I think also, you shouldn't feel like I need to decide today exactly what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. What you can do is choose an area like STEM, which obviously you guys are interested in, you wouldn't be here today, uh, and, find and learn skills that you can use in a bunch of different areas and not worry about the fact that your life might take uh, a few uh, right or left turns along the way and you might end up someplace else. I think that's, that's completely fine. Uh, I think science uh, and technology are a great choice for anybody who's naturally curious about the world around them and how it works. And as I say, I think there's huge demand for these careers and great earnings potential. So I think it checks all those uh, boxes um, if it's an area that is of interest to you. Now, I know you're thinking, uh, are there many women in these areas of study? And I can happily tell you, actually, yes. Uh, the numbers are increasing all the time, which is just fantastic. We have 20 times the women in science, technology, engineering, and math that we did 20 years ago. And momentum just keeps building. As an example, the University of Toronto you know, one of our uh, most respected academic institutions in this country uh, with a world-recognized engineering program has 42% women. 
women in their freshman class this year, which is amazing, 41% last year. So this is something that they have been you know, really working on and building up. So uh, women are a huge part of that program and they aren't alone. You know, you look at the University of Waterloo, Western, uh, University of Guelph, McMaster, all of these uh, schools have really done a lot over the last decade to, uh, to try to attract more women and they're seeing the results and the numbers are just getting uh, bigger all the time. Uh, in fact, Canadian women aged 25 to 34 held, hold 39% of all STEM degrees. That's based on a study in 2011, so I'm sure it's higher now, which is amazing, because there's just so many exciting career opportunities there. Uh, and great earnings potential as well. Women in STEM jobs earn 35% more than their counterparts that are in non-STEM uh, careers and 40% more than non-STEM men. Uh, so that's another great reason to head uh, in this direction. And it's why I and many others believe we should be doing everything we can to try to increase even more the representation of women in STEM. In fact, just today, myself and other members of the Canada US Council for the Advancement of Women in Business and Entrepreneurship are releasing a report that includes specific recommendations uh, of what we think we should do to do just that, to increase women in STEM. Uh, through better communication, better sharing of some of these statistics that I've just uh, shared with you, changes to how we teach STEM, both within the, uh, the uh, secondary school or middle school uh, areas, as well as in our universities and colleges, uh, sharing the many tools and programs that are out there. When we started doing our research in this area, we couldn't believe how many different great programs and tools and institutions are focused on exactly this. So uh, let's try and share those so we can all uh, learn from them. And then finally, our recommendations are also another thing that Dr. Niemer brought up, and that's around sharing great stories of role models that you guys can all connect to and be a, a little bit inspired to, to, to go towards. Today's all about that, right, is meeting some people in all kinds of different areas of STEM and what that can mean uh, to you. And I think uh, role models and mentors are just so important to helping uh, encourage more women into this area. When I started out in the automotive industry, as Dr. Neumer said, I was often the only woman in the room. But I, ha I can tell you that that has totally changed today. From 25 years ago when I first started in the automotive industry, there's so many more women uh, in every different area uh, of the business and every different level as well. I mean, the CEO of the third largest automotive company in the world, General Motors, is a woman, Mary Barra. She was my, actually my partner on the STEM report that we're releasing uh, today. Uh, so I think that's great. Now, how did I handle that? I'm often asked, and you know, I, I, I personally feel that the lack of women uh, you know, around me wasn't, wasn't an issue for me. And I think that's another piece of advice I would give you. If you find yourself in a situation where you are the only woman or one of only a few, don't, uh, don't let that become an issue for you. It, it's, if you look for negative, you'll find it. So don't look for it. You know, I always, did, I chose to not sort of dial into that frequency, you know? And maybe there was people questioning, was I capable, was I not? But I always just got down to work and did my job and I was capable and smart and I worked hard and, uh, you know, it doesn't take long for that to kind of become clear. And then, you know, after all, everybody's there to do a job and we all got down to doing our work. So I think that's, good advice for you if you're in that kind of uh, situation. You keep focused, you study hard, you work hard, do your job well, and people will recognize that. And they'll quickly forget about any preconceptions that they might have had about, uh, about you. Keep performing and I think you get attention. That's really the bottom, bottom line. Uh, I also think you young women are very lucky because you're living here in southwestern Ontario, right in the heart of an incredible ecosystem that has developed around technology uh, and science in, and exciting areas like artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, from institutions like the Perimeter Institute right here, focused on more fundamental thinking, to a, a really fantastic network of universities and colleges 
incubators and accelerators to help you get your businesses started if that's something you want to do uh, is, um, is pretty exciting. You are also sitting in the second largest technology cluster in the world next to Silicon Valley. There's more technology startups and more technology workers and people focused in this field uh, than anywhere in the world except uh, Silicon Valley. That's pretty amazing, right? Uh, and you're living right in the middle of it, so take, take advantage of that. Uh, you know, in my opinion, there's never been a time frame where the technological evolution, thanks to technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning, will transform so many industries and so many areas of companies. And it's another reason why more and more companies are looking for people uh, in the STEM fields to help manage that uh, transition. The fact is really in today's rapidly evolving technology, the demand for unskilled jobs will just continue to diminish. And the demand for skilled people uh, is going to just increase. And we're experiencing that right, right now uh, with a, a constant need for more people in, in technology, in IT, in engineering, uh, in quality, all the technical areas of our company. So you've all made the, first, the right first step by coming here today to learn a little bit about uh, different areas of science. And from a great uh, lineup of speakers, I think you're going to love hearing uh, their stories in, uh, in a whole variety of different areas. So I hope you have a really fantastic morning. I hope that you learn something new. And ultimately, of course, I hope that you decide to pursue an education in science, technology, engineering, in math and, uh, or math. And I hope that you convince at least one other young woman to do uh, the same. So with that, I believe we have just a few minutes for some questions. If anybody has, uh, has a question for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, you held so many diverse roles at Linamar, from machine operator all the way up to president. And I was just wondering, you know, was there a moment when you were first starting where you were like, one day I'm going to be president of this company? Or was there experience where you were like, this is, this is where I'm headed? Did you know? Or was it more smaller incremental steps along the way? Well, I think that uh, I had a great opportunity to see our business from a lot of different perspectives, which actually is another piece of advice that I would give you when you do uh, head out into your careers, is seeing a company from a bunch of different perspectives, whether it be shop floor, this is what we do to make money every single day, to working in engineering, to working in quality, accounting, uh, estimating. I worked in uh, almost every different area of our company. And it was a, a fantastic experience. It really helped me to see how the whole thing came together. And I think it was that experience itself that, you know, made it easier for me to step into a general manager role when I started up uh, my first plant because I had a good understanding of how all those pieces work together. So uh, it's something I would really recommend uh, as you're heading out into your careers to do a little bit of lateral move. Uh, and not be afraid of, you know, leaving one area and going to another and just experiencing what that's like and, uh, and, and uh, you know, g gaining that experience. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yeah? Hi, um, my name is Naomi. I go to St. Mary's High School in Kitchener. And my question is, like, when you were growing up, what inspired you to follow, like, the science path? Like, did you have, like, any good, really great teachers that were really supportive or anything like that? Yeah, I'd say a couple things. I mean, one, I was always just naturally curious about science. I was naturally curious about the world around me and how things worked. I was one of those kids that asked all those questions that my mother couldn't answer. Uh, so, you know, I, I enjoyed those courses the more, most, but for sure I had great teachers uh, who really, you know, made science interesting, made math interesting, as if it wouldn't be. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and I think that's very important, right, to, uh, to helping to inspire you along, uh, along that path. Um, my father, uh, it, who's the founder of our, our company, is a machinist, so he's a, a technology tradesman uh, by, by trade. Uh, and he is incredibly naturally curious as well. So he, um, he inspired me in many ways uh, as well to be curious about the world around me and really encouraged me 
uh, to, uh, to study uh, science and, and engineering. Hi, um, my name is Savannah. I was wondering if you had any siblings or um, you know, uh, influences that were the same age as you who uh, helped you um, get involved in STEM and follow your career choice. I do have an older sister. She is she is not uh, in STEM. She was the sort of the more creative uh, half of the of, of the family, and and that was actually kind of good because you know it's it you always need both, right? You need a little little of uh, each. Uh, so my sister was not, um, but you know I had friends who were interested in science and technology as well. And as I say, I think my uh, parents and my teachers were probably the most influential towards me, and. And I think just my natural curiosity as well. Like, I mean, it was an area that I just naturally had an affinity, affinity to and really enjoyed. So it made it easy to decide to stick uh, in, in those areas. Take one last question. Hi, my name is Claire Francis. And I was wondering what sort of opportunities you think young girls like us should be taking advantage of right now to help us achieve like our goals like you did? Yeah, uh, I think that. Um, uh, well, as, as I was saying in my formal comments, I think, you know, studying in the STEM areas, technology, IT, science, engineering, uh, are all uh, great areas for you guys to, to focus on. Uh, if you want to learn more, there's all kinds of different uh, programs out there. There are uh, summer programs, for instance, like University of Toronto has a summer program uh, for engineering. I can't remember if it's just for women or if it's more, more broad, but it's a great way for you to learn about engineering at the U of T and what that's all about and where, you know, the kind of things you would do and study and where you can take it so you can learn a little bit uh, more there. So uh, there are all, all kinds of those types of programs out there that can help uh, teach you more uh, about, uh, about what the different, uh, different options are. And today I think you'll learn uh, a lot as well. So uh, one of the recommendations that we're making as part of our report today is actually to create uh, a really comprehensive website portal uh, that's mobile friendly that can give you all that information, that can show you all the different programs out there, connect you to all the different tools, connect you to mentors and role models, and help you do that career path, career path planning to say, oh, I'm really interested in biology. What does that mean? What are the jobs I can do? And like I was saying, what's the job demand and, and you know, the earnings for those jobs? Or, or you could start with you know, a goal, like uh, I want to save the humpback whale. How do I do that? And OK, well, these are, the kind of, these are the kind of things you could study. You could you know, decide to focus on marine biology. And here's what, you know, how you can do that. And here's the schools that can help you achieve those goals. So that's a recommendation we're making today that uh, you know, we're, ho we're hoping will become, uh, become a reality and be a great source of information for you and a lot of others. Thank you. Thank you so much. Linda. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great day.